Hello and welcome to another typing puzzle video. It's been a while since we've done one of these, but I have not forgotten about this series. They're, it's still happening. Uh, in today's puzzle, we're going over a pattern that I've seen a few times. Uh, I've actually used this in some of my own code. And as part of this video, uh, we'll actually show you how I use this to fix my pie. Believe it or not, there was a bug in my pie that was almost the same as this puzzle. Uh, anyway, as usual, we're going to get started by cloning and we're going to set up a virtual environment and we are going to install MyPy so you can see what version I'm using. MyPy 1.16 just came out, so we're using, well, I just came out a couple days ago. Uh, so we're using relatively new MyPy for this, which is nice, although it doesn't affect this puzzle at all. And if we see the into puzzle 006, we can get started. So let's take a look at this, explain what's going on, and then uh, walk you through the solution to this. So admittedly, this is contrived, but you can imagine similar code to this existing and doing something else similar. Uh, basically, this is a function that takes an optional argument and it needs to differentiate between being passed none or some real value or no value at all. Of course, we're just printing here, so it's not you know, the most interesting version of that, uh, but this is one way to write this. And I've seen this pattern all the time to define a sentinel object, a singleton sentinel, sentinel. <laughs> Man, that's a pain to say, uh, in this case, by just calling object pren pren. Uh, the nice thing about object pren pren is if you call it, you're going to get, oops, x equals object. You're going to get a unique object. And if you make another one, uh, they will never be the same because they are uh, different memory addresses. I, 10 bytes here looks like, well, no, it'd be 16 bytes because hex, right? I can, I know how to read hex. Uh, so this pattern is a way to make a singleton and then this differentiates uh, that. And just to show you that this code works, well, we should comment out the one that should be an error. Uh, to show you that this code works, you can see that we correctly identify when x is not passed or when it's explicitly passed none or when we give it some value. Cool. Now, this wouldn't be a typing puzzles video if we weren't going to attempt to type this. So let's actually uh, copy this to solution.py and start running MyPy on it. Sure, we'll call strict. And MyPy is going to be like, you didn't add any annotations and of course. So let's work on our annotations. Now, naively, you would think, okay, this is an object, so this type is object. So if we just do object, uh, then, hooray, we've correctly typed this function, uh, which sort of works. Uh, it's going to be mad about this because object doesn't define uh, power exponentiation here. So we're, we're getting closer with that. Uh, unsupported operand types for star star object and int. Now, you could explicitly check for int here and then narrow the branches that way. Uh, but I want to show you a different solution that keeps this, this, the, the body of this function the same, but allows us to actually properly differentiate whether this missing object is used. Uh, now, before we actually do that, I'm going to show you the hint. Uh, pause here if you want to figure it out yourself. The hint here is maybe there's another way to make a singleton that the type checker will understand. We've already shown that none is not a valid one. Um, one that uh, allows us to differentiate an acceptable or unacceptable value. Now, there are a number of built-in singletons in Python. We actually could use true here. <laughs> uh, well, actually, no, we can't because true is also an integer. So we can't use true. We could use ellipsis. <laughs> but I think this is not really in the spirit of this because you might imagine this in some other situation where ellipsis is a valid value or uh, you know, true is a valid value or none is a valid value. Uh, and I want this pattern to be able to work in any situation where you might have any arbitrary value, but we need to set aside a special sentinel value that we can narrow properly. And one way to do this, or one way in the type system, is to define another type, especially using an enum. Uh, enums are one of the things that MyPy knows how to narrow via identity. And we can build our own missing type here. So let's say, Missing type equals enum.enum. .enum. Missing type. Yes, they are stringly typed, which is just the way things go. And we can assign our missing to missing 
I'm dot missing. Have I written the word missing enough? I hope so. And so now we can adjust our type signature here to either be int, none, or our missing type. Now it's probably useful to underscore this as well. That way people don't actually, I mean, nothing stops somebody from importing using this type, but to denote that this is not intended to be accessed directly. This is how we're, how we're figuring out whether something was explicitly passed or not. And so now in this case, MyPay is able to say, well, in this branch, it was this missing type. Uh, in this branch, it's obviously none. And it should know down here that, that x is always an integer. And we'll uncomment this in a second to show that that's an error. Uh, if we run MyPy on this now. String argument one missing type does not match the variable. Ah, uh, yes. I added the underscore after I typed it out. We need to make sure that the type name matches the actual assignment here, otherwise MyPy will not help us out there. Missing type is not defined. Yes, of course. <laughs> Didn't add it in all those places. But now you can see that once I fix my typos, MyPy knows that this is narrowed to int, and we have our solution here. Just to show that this also forbids other things, obviously a string is not one of these, so it'd be pretty easy to rid that, but you can see here that, yeah, can't pass her. Cool. So now I want to show you how I fix my buy, uh, but also a YouTube video where I've gone over this pattern <laughs> a long time ago, four years ago. Uh, I actually, oddly enough, come to the same solution in this, but this video is more about why you would use object and not how to type it. Uh, but let's talk about the bug in MyPy. So this was actually, I was just scrolling through the MyPy issue checker, which I do sometimes when I'm either reporting a bug or exceedingly bored. And I noticed this kind of interesting bug. Uh, and just from the title, I could, I already sort of knew that this was the mistake that was being made and already had a solution in mind. It was a guess and the guess ended up being right. But yeah, basically what was happening is uh, StubGen, which is a tool inside MyPy, it analyzes code and then will generate PyI files, stub files for you. And in particular, it was mishandling default arguments where something was set to none in particular cases. And this was one example that the, uh, the author of this, uh, Michael, proposed. Michael actually went above and beyond to provide a full repository that has reproduction, which is really awesome. I really like when people do this because it makes it really easy to step through something and figure out where they went wrong and then fix it. Um, and you can see here that um, <clears throat> MyPy produces, uh, or should have produced something that looked like this, or perhaps had a type on B. But you can see here that it generated a syntax error. You can't have a defaulted argument before a positional argument like this. So produced produced a syntax error. Uh, and yeah, I decided to try and fix this and uh, basically had to handle none as an argument. And the way I did this, surprise, surprise, is by using this enum trick where I had a missing type. I actually didn't make a constant like I did here, but same idea. Adjusted this callable, which was supposed to be retrieve me the default value of this argument. Uh, originally it returned object or none, object being any of the possible things that it could have returned or none in the case where there was no argument. However, the oversight here is that the default could itself be none. And so you need to differentiate between those two. And basically I just adjusted the code like this and yeah, that's the fix. Of course I had to do a little bit more work down here because I had to adjust the particular implementations of getting keyword defaults. And I also wrote a little test for it. The test was actually more work than anything else because I, I couldn't find a good example in the code base uh, that did something similar until I eventually found, I think, Literally the test above this. But this is how I figured it out and how I fixed this bug. So anyway, that's that's the solution here. Uh, using the um. <laughs> Anyway, hopefully you found this useful. And if you have other suggestions for typing puzzles, you can join the Discord. It's linked in the description. That's where I collect a lot of these and make videos out of them. Hopefully you found this useful, and I'll see you in the next one.